Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. After taking a look to our southern neighbor Austria yesterday, where I told you that the Chancellor Sebastian Kurz stepped down from his office, I want to go back now to Germany and talk about the aftermath of our election at the end of September. As you guys know, there are basically three options now for a ruling coalition and that is that the Grand Coalition, the Social Democrats and the CDU-CSU continue. That is rather unlikely as nobody, including those two parties, three parties, actually wants that. Then we have two remaining options of which one is at the moment it looks way more likely than the other one and that is that the Liberal Party and the Green Party rule together with one of the other large parties and that is the CDU, CSU and the SPD, the Social Democrats and the Center Cucks. And at the moment, because the CDU of Angela Merkel is in disarray after she left, Armin Laschet was a weak candidate during the campaign and he is a even weaker leader right now when the party would need it most. So it is very likely that the Green Party and the Liberals will form a coalition with the SPD. They already started talks and not very much is publicly known. They have high discipline, it seems, not much information leaks out but it seems very likely at the moment. Today I want to give you a lot of individual information about how Angela Merkel's party is doing at the moment and how things and what kind of things are moving in that party in this center-right quote-unquote conservative or uh, fake conservative party. And I want to start with maybe the most uh, important or the most prominent news right now. And that is that Armin Laschet, the chancellor candidate and leader of the CDU, he has announced that he would also take his leave from the party head position, from the chairman position. And he would be willing to open the way for another guy in the CDU to become chancellor in case that the coalition with the Green and the Liberal Party would be successful. He said that it shouldn't fail just because of me as a person. Or It sounds pretty much like what uh, Sebastian Kurz said, uh, that uh, uh, Austria is more important than me as a person. And Laschet says now, oh, uh, Germany is more important or the Jamaican coalition as they call this black green yellow coalition um, that is more important than the person Armin Laschet that that sounds so noble and and selfless yeah but uh, in fact it is what losers say if they want to leave the stage uh, with uh, saving some face uh, maybe a little bit or so they think and as you guys know and as I underline and state very often the color black in Germany, these union parties, are actually two different parties. It's the CDU outside of Bavaria, and the CDU doesn't exist in Bavaria, but the CSU, the sister party, is what we have here in Bavaria. And if you followed my channel during the election campaign, for example, you might remember that the other contender for being the chancellor candidate, the running champion of the CDU, was Mr. Söder, or Södolf as the popular calls him from Bavaria and it is a fact that Mr. Söder um, yeah he was not successful Mr. Laschet from North Rhine-Westphalia won against him in uh, this race to being the running champion the leader of these two parties as is most often the case because the CSU is of course the smaller of the two sister parties but Söderolf was not taking this loss uh, very well in a democratic sense that yes I lost and now we've fight together against the political opponent. No, he was a sore loser and during the entire campaign he kind of criticized Mr. Laschet all the time. And that is of course not how you should represent uh, your team during an election campaign. And maybe that is one of the reasons, of the many reasons, why the CDU did so badly during the 
this election. And yeah, one clearly has to state the fact that Mr. Söder, um, I'm not uh, promoting him, I'm not going to advertise for him or something, not that it matters anyway right now, but uh, most of the CDU-minded uh, people, most of their voters thought of him as the stronger candidate and also among the population he is way more popular than Mr. Laschet so by objective standards Mr. Söder was the better candidate but you know politics is politics so the person who is best suited for a job rarely ever gets that job. There are many other factors that are involved here. And then Mr. Matz now, who is also one of Angela Merkel's old rivals, he is now understandably criticizing the CSU for not being disciplined and not being a team player. But I think you can already see what's going on here. These two parties and these rivals, they are attacking each other now and they are dragging each other down into the mud. And that is not how a successful team looks like. But I have to say, you know, Mr. Söder definitely has a point because he was the stronger candidate and the CDU, CSU, they would have done much better with him as the chancellor candidate. That is for sure. And of course, Mr. Matz also has a point that uh, in the interest of the party and the election, you should be a little more disciplined and not attack your own party and the chancellor candidate of your faction the entire time. But if you think that they did badly during the election, well, there are also polls that were taken after the election. And it looks like the CDU um, yeah, was uh, giving such a disastrous uh, picture in the media and in the public that um, their share in the polls, their results were even dropping further. They're now at 20%, uh, whereas they uh, had over 20% in the election. And the SPD is now stable at 28%. So clearly ahead of the CDU. And of course, many people in the party that were shutting up uh, because it was a running election campaign, they are not shutting up anymore. They are open and vocal about um, their call for change in the party. And there are certain things that are already happening. Very, very uh, peculiar. I've never heard about this. Uh, but uh, Mr. Altmaier, our economics minister, and uh, Frau Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer, or AK, um, I talked about her. She was, uh, until now, the defense minister of Germany, of course. And uh, she was the governor of the small uh, state Saarland uh, at the French border. And uh, she uh, should have been installed by Angela Merkel or was installed as her successor or as her replacement. But, well, that failed miserably. She did a lousy job, a poor job as a defense minister. And she actually said that, you know, if anything goes wrong at the Hindu Kush, I will take responsibility. And maybe that is her responsibility now. So anyway, so what did Mr. Altmaier and AKK do? Um, they were elected into the Bundestag over a very, very prominent list position. So they didn't win a district directly. They were very high up on the list as ministers, of course, but they said, no, we don't want to be in the Bundestag anymore. We do not accept our mandate and we step down and we open the path for newer, younger CDU candidates that were on lower list positions. And who are those young, dynamic gemstones that are advancing now because these uh, two sex symbols of the CDU, there is no other way to say it. I mean, just look at them. The CDU just lost their most attractive and most sexy politicians. So all the potential voters that are interested in the male physique and who are also interested in the female physique. I mean, who is uh, catching their attention now in the CDU? I mean, they basically lost all those voters now. No, kidding aside. I mean, who are these people who advance now? Um, it is a young chick that is for women's quotas and it is a 40-year-old guy who worked for the state. Yeah, that, that's great. That sounds like reform. That sounds like 
like the way forward for a conservative movement in Germany. Yeah, sure, that's gonna work. And of course, there are young members of the CDU, and by young, I mean under the age of 60, who are now revolting and they say, which is in the interest of um, themselves, of course, in their careers, uh, that uh, the party needs to renew itself now. And uh, But of course, you always have to take that with a grain of salt, because um, they are are trying to further their own careers by destroying the older guys who are above them. Because in politics, people normally don't retire at age 60 or 63. They stay there forever. And the longer they stay, the less likely it becomes that these younger guys can actually have a successful career. And there are some guys who never actually make it up there because it was just bad timing and there was a really popular guy who stayed there until 75. So it is of course very predictable and uh, very plain to see why these younger guys, these 55 year old people, right, why they are saying, oh, we need a renewal, we need new guys. And, uh, you know, Merkel was also using a crisis um, around Helmut Kohl, a corruption scandal, uh, in order to get ahead. And uh, yeah, she did. Okay, let's sum up and repeat some things. The relationship between the Bavarian CSU and the rest of Germany's CDU, uh, the sister parties, this relationship is very poisoned, very difficult and complicated at the moment. And moreover, um, individuals are also now criticizing each other, fighting against each other. There are prominent ministers from Merkel's government who are stepping down and who are saying, well, we don't even want to be in the Bundestag. Uh, let's get some newer people here to the front. The party youth or well, the relatively young people there, they want to promote their careers and they say these old losers, they have to go away. And during all this time, it's technically not yet off the table that there will be a coalition with the CDU, uh, with the uh, Green Party and the Liberal Party together. But I have to tell you, it looks very unlikely because I mean, what is the image that this uh, union party here, or these union parties uh, give? Uh, to the Liberal Party and the Green Party, it is not very attractive. It is very unattractive. It is like an old woman who talks about their exes all the time and smokes one cigarette after the other on the first date. It's not really appealing, right? That is not what you want to see in a future partner. So Mr. Laschet kind of stepped down, but not really. He says he wants to stay with the party until the situation is resolved. And in this time of crisis, he doesn't want to just, you know, leave the party. Uh, he actually said that he is still fighting for this Jamaica coalition, but he says if it's gonna be some other guy as the future chancellor, that's fine with him. Some people criticize him now for um, yeah, 50% stepping down and not completely, but you know, I can kind of understand that because he also doesn't want to be seen as the guy who leaves the party when they would need him and he says he wants to organize this transition period and then step down, which, which yeah, maybe he will and that would be actually a, a good move maybe or maybe he can still be of help and he can organize the next uh, meeting of the party where they will clear these issues that would be okay actually I could be wrong on this point, but it is my feeling right now uh, that even Mr. Laschet understood that nobody really wants him or would accept him as chancellor. And uh, he wants to serve the party maybe, but he understood probably that it is time for him now to retire. And he will also not go back to North Rhine-Westphalia as a uh, governor, which uh, Mr. Söder still is in Bavaria, for example. There is already a successor in place uh, to become a after him, the governor of North Rhine-Westphalia. So in short, the CDU is destroyed and uh, if they're not completely destroyed, then they're in the process of demolishing the pitiful remains of what was left of the party after this election and after Angela Merkel leaves. Because Angela Merkel is the reason for this pitiful state of the party. But uh, yeah, believe it or not, uh, she is also the reason that it collapses now. She made sure that there is no political talent anymore after her and that the uh, foundation is hollowed out, so to speak. And by leaving, she kind of of, uh, kicked the crutch away and now the whole house collapses. 
A big thanks and shout out to all my supporters and my subscribers. Like, share and subscribe and also check me out on other social media platforms. The links are in the descriptions down below. And while you're there, you could consider supporting me via Patreon or Subscribestar. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Servus, Kameraden.